Hi everyone! Taking its name from the concept of triadic transformation, an action performed using the most direct or efficient voice leading on one or more degrees of a consonant triad, major and minor, to produce another consonant triad, triadic transformation theory gives its name to several related theories, also often labelled Neo-Romanian theory. Developed by David Lewin and others specifically for analysing pantriadic music, music which uses consonant triads but lacks tonal unity, or sections of otherwise diatonic progressions containing one or more non-diatonic chords. Triadic transformation theory can be used in conjunction with or can provide an alternative to other analytical approaches and can be used for determining relationships between triads and sections of music or complete works. It can also be applied to different music genres, including the late renaissance, jazz, rock, and pop. Some of the theory's basic transformations include the R transformation, which retains two common notes between a major and minor triad. The root and third of the major triad is also the third and fifth of the minor, while the triad's remaining note moves by major second. Because this and other transformations may move between the relevant triads beginning on either chord, the major second in this transformation may ascend or descend. R transformations move between relative major and minor triads. It should be noted, however, that although this move outlines a common diatonic progression, for example between the tonic and submediant chords in a major key, it can also be used to describe the equivalent move in pantriadic contexts, such as in this progression. In both diatonic and pantriadic contexts, however, it's the voice leading between the triads which is highlighted by use of this theory. The P transformation also retains two common notes and moves between major and minor triads. In this operation, the root and fifth of both triads are retained, while the third either ascends or descends by minor second. This transformation moves between parallel major and minor triads. And the L transformation also retains two common notes and moves between major and minor triads. The third and fifth degrees of the major triad is also the root and third of the minor, while the remaining note ascends or descends by minor second. This transformation moves between a major triad and the minor triad whose root note is on the major triad's third. All of these transformations are parsimonious as both triads share two notes. To avoid the need for many basic transformations covering every possible distance between triads, compound transformations such as LRP or RP may also occur. While compound transformations may move in either direction, they are always written with the transformation's initial chord on the left and then move towards the right. Compound transformations use the designated transformations to produce a single operation. Using an RP transformation beginning from a C major triad, for example, results in an A major triad. The R transformation moves the C major triad to A minor, which is then transformed to A major by the P transformation. It should be noted that the connecting triads in compound transformations, such as the A minor triad in this example, are not actually present in the music, but simply connect the voice leading between the other triads using here two of the earlier discussed basic transformations. It may be argued that the RP transformation, along with the basic transformations discussed earlier, can be explained as common note progressions. While this is true, unlike triadic transformation theory, a common note label fails to describe the voice leading of each note of the relevant triads. Using a knowledge of triadic transformation theory and idealized voice leading, for example, we know that two of the parts of the triads involved in an RP transformation move in ascending parallel motion, while the third part is retained as a common note. As we'll see, triadic transformation theory may also reveal underlying patterns between chords absent in other analytical approaches. Transformations may also be shown on a tonnets where parallel major and minor triads interlock respectively above and below their shared perfect fifth. Using a tonnets, the most efficient motion between the C and A major triads of our earlier example, which in this case is send, visually include the connecting A minor triad. The common E note can also be seen. RP or PR transformations may also form part of an octatonic cycle, so called because all of its associated triads may be formed from one of those scales, in this instance the octatonic scale on C. 
on a tonnets, octatonic cycles occupy this diagonal, and their notes also form flanking diminished seventh arpeggios. The common E note here also connects these chords to three others, which together form a so-called LRP loop, the transformations connecting its six triad members. In this way, then, triadic transformation theory can potentially illustrate deeper connections between triads, which other explanations, such as a common note label, may omit. Triadic transformation theory can be applied to seemingly disparate chords which are immediately adjacent, or to those separated by other events. An example of the first type can be seen in the jazz standard Little Sunflower, which uses the following chords creating a progression which may be explained in several ways, including a 1 flat 2 major 1 progression in the key of D minor. Triadic transformation theory also reveals that each of Little Sunflower's chords are connected by the following basic and compound transformations including the S transformation, which moves between major and minor triads whose root notes are a semitone apart. This operation retains the third of each triad, while the first and fifth degrees ascend or descend by minor second. In this way, the transformations together form two sets of alternating P and S transformations. In his concerto for violin and cello, Brahms also, after a 2-5-1 cadence in A-flat major, connects the following chords, creating a progression which can only be explained unsatisfactorily in terms of mixture or borrowed chords. A common note explanation also only reveals that aspect of the chords' relationships. Triadic transformation theory, however, reveals not only the transformations connecting these chords, but the P-L pattern they create. Together, these chords also form a hexatonic cycle, which on the tonnets occupies the diagonal moving orthogonally to the octatonic cycles. On the tonnets, the notes of these hexatonic cycles form flanking augmented triads. Brahms's progression in this case descends along one of these cycles. An example of other events separating triads can be seen in the opening of this sonata by Schubert. Here the main changes of chords produce the following progression connected by these transformations. While no underlying pattern connects these transformations, on the tonnets we can see that four of the chords are part of an LRP loop around the note A. The initial three chords also descend through an octatonic cycle before shifting to an adjacent octatonic cycle for the C-sharp major triad, which together with the D minor and F major triads are part of an LRP loop around F. The following chords, C-sharp major and A major, are then part of another LRP loop, this time around C-sharp. The move back to D major then returns the progression to the original chord and octatonic cycle. In this example, the temporary change of key to the parallel minor D minor is also represented by the P transformation. In the opening of this piece also, the three keys which Debussy uses as its compositional basis produce the following connections, as well as membership to another LRP loop, this time centred around F. Here and in the Schubert example then, while other chords are present, only the main chords or a key's tonic triad are used to map the underlying connections between them.
triadic transformation theory's ability to map the voice setting of chords immediately adjacent and those over larger distances allows it to be used with other analytical methods. In this graph, for example, René Roush aligns Schenker's analysis of a Schubert excerpt with their own transformation theory analysis. While the two analyses essentially agree, Roush's analysis also reveals the progression may be separated into chords belonging to hexatonic and octatonic cycles connected by the pivot A. This gives the A natural an alternative interpretation to Schenker's Ray's subdominant and E-flat major explanation, which Roush explains as problematic. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.